exercise is a double-edged sword okay uh, we're learning more and more about exercise and its effects on on health in general and uh, particularly about cardiovascular health uh, about you know, the heart and the blood vessels and we know that um, for sure if you exercise regularly um, it it's associated with increased longevity um, you feel better you feel happier but on the other hand we're also learning that um, and we've developed a, a new uh, um, a subspecialty within cardiology called SWOT cardiology um, where we look after um, the cardiovascular systems of, of sportsmen, amateur and professional. Um, and this has only emerged in the last 10 years and we've realized that through doing a lot of uh, research, doing imaging on athletes, etc., that um, the, the amount of uh, atheroma which is heart artery blockages um, in present in, in a person's arteries is actually correlated with the intensity and duration of exercise um, they do every week. That's actually quite a surprising thing for most people. Everyone thinks that if I exercise, then my arteries won't block up. Actually, uh, exercise, I, I said earlier on, is a double-edged sword. Uh, when you exercise, especially when you do extreme exercise, um, your, your body actually becomes inflamed. The immune system becomes too excited almost. And when the immune system gets very excited, it sometimes causes collateral damage. It causes damage to the arteries and allows cholesterol to burrow itself into the artery walls and, and cause blockages. But then the flip side is that because of the beneficial effects of exercise, all these blockages never get to grow very, very big. So the trick for cardiologists and for the general public is to determine what level of exercise is actually safe for them to do and to determine before they participate in exercise whether it's safe for them to participate in exercise. You know, because a lot of the times people don't feel um, things that are problems that are building up inside their bodies until um, they, they have a symptom. And by the time they have a symptom, Sometimes it's already very advanced. There was a, a young man, uh, 42 years of age, uh, very fit. Uh, he was an ultra marathon runner. The year before, um, I seen him and uh, he was doing a, a European ultra marathon. And usually when you go to Europe and do an ultra marathon, they require pre-participation screening. They require you to do an ECG and be evaluated by the doctor so I did that and I also did a, a stress test on him and ran him on the treadmill at the same time um, observed uh, his heart's response and everything looked normal everything looked lovely so I signed him off and he went and did his ultra marathon now a year later he came back to me and said you know I just did a, a longish run uh, over the weekend and you know, towards the end of the run, I was feeling some chest pain. I sent him for a, a more advanced test, a CT scan, and I was actually very surprised to find that he had quite extensive uh, artery blockages in very important arteries. Um, we ended up having to further evaluate all these blockages um, through uh, minimally invasive surgery, uh, put a catheter into his heart and, and, and have a look from the inside of the artery and we realized that actually some of these blockages were causing his symptoms. And uh, we ended up having to put a stent in and then put him on uh, strong medications to reduce the chances that there's, there's a repeat of this, this problem. But it was a shock to him, obviously, and a shock to me, because you would never expect someone like that with no significant family history, theoretically a normal cholesterol level, no diabetes, never smokes, you know, it has a, in an essentially vegan lifestyle and to develop uh, severe artery disease at that kind of age. Since then, I've also been seeing, you know, been picking up quite a few patients uh, with that kind of profile as well. The moral of the story is, is that as doctors, we have to be extra vigilant with patients who are theoretically very fit. The uh, intensity and quantity of exercise is, is correlated with the number of arterial blockages um, in, in, in the heart. 
you know, the, the surprising finding. And so extreme exercise does increase the amount of this. But net-net, it's always a, a risk and benefit balance. Net-net, exercise is still good for you. Um, you know, if it's beneficial for your psychological status, if it's, uh, it's making you happier, um, it's making you fitter in general, then it's going to increase your, extend your longevity. What the key question is, is we need as a medical community and as patients, we need to be aware of this, this correlation between extreme exercise and damage to the arteries and inflammation and to identify those patients who are at risk and screen them and pick up the ones who need extra help. Oh, absolutely. We have, um, the human body has uh, massive reserves. Um, we're born with two lungs. We're born with, you know, we only need one to survive. We're born with uh, a, a, a huge liver and you only need, you know, a half of it or less to survive. You can donate half of it to someone who needs it. We use up this reserve uh, throughout our lives at different rates, depending on how much you abuse your body, your, your lifestyle, your diet, etc., etc. Generally, you can use up all this reserve and still feel absolutely fine until the very last moment when you're about to drop off the cliff. Then you start feeling something. But by the time you're about to drop off the cliff, it's sometimes very, very advanced already. The solution to this increasingly is personalized medicine and screening. So screening being having a health check regularly and us as doctors identifying um, what we call risk factors, um, things that such as cholesterol, diabetes, etc., that we know that uh, increase the risk of heart disease. Um, and if we see these markers and these markers are out of whack, then we know that this patient is at high risk and we need to you know, look further or we need to maybe start some preventive maintenance. In terms of uh, the cardiovascular system, um, one of the most important symptoms is feeling discomfort when you're, you're ex exerting yourself. Whether it's running, whether it's cycling, walking up the stairs, when your heart rate goes up, you're using up some of your reserve. When you're exercising, you get to the phase where you can't take it anymore. That's the limit of your, 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 your cardiovascular reserve, basically. Between sitting down, where you're, you, you've got massive reserve, you've got like 80% reserve, and running at you know, full tilt, you have this big range. So, you know, uh, walking up the stairs, uh, walking up one flight of stairs might just be uh, using up, you know, 10% of your reserve. Um, running at a slow pace might be using up 30%. Running up Oak Peak Road uh, might be taking up 80%. And, you know, doing an ultra marathon would be using up 100%. Now, at those different phases, if you start feeling symptoms, especially if you start feeling symptoms at a low uh, utilization of your reserves. So let's say you're walking up the stairs and you already feel uncomfortable for whatever reason. It might be that your heart's pounding really hard compared to normal. I mean, what's, what's normal for you? You know your body the best. You know, normally you can run up the stairs without problems, but why is it now you get up to, you know, three or four steps and then you already feel short of breath? If you feel chest pain after uh, you exert yourself, if you feel that your heart is beating too quickly um, compared to the level of exertion that you're doing, um, you're feeling more short of breath than normal. The most important thing for, for everyone is to maintain mobility, especially as, as one ages. If you read this article and you suddenly decide that um, you're going to start doing a lot of exercise, um, that's not such a great idea because your body's not used to it. Um, it would be very important for someone who's normally quite sedentary, who's not moving a lot, to start very gently and then build it up. And build it up to somewhere where you're comfortable, where you can sustain it. Don't go to extremes. If you go and do an ex extreme sport for one month, 
and then and you pull back completely and don't do it for two months, then that's actually quite terrible for the body. Whereas if you consistently do just small amounts of exercise, especially exercises that increase your heart rate to a certain extent, um, then that would be fantastic. Now, one of the most fantastic sports to do is swimming. My observation is that you know my patients, the octogenarians and nonagenarians who look the best, who look amazing, are the ones who swim every day. You know because you know swimming, you you increase your heart rate, you're using all the muscles in your body, and at the same time, the chances of injury are, are less. There are various different levels of heart checks and screenings, but the most basic and simple way to screen for your heart problems, uh, especially before you're doing exercise, is to have an electrocardiogram done, an ECG done, um, and, uh, and to have blood tests done. And those combined with a consultation with the doctor already is able to detect quite a lot of things.